Welcome to Camille's Harem, not just a podcast, but also a YouTube channel for novice writers by novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. Welcome to another episode of Writer's Rants. As you can see, I finally have my glorious study to reside in, so no more vastness of space for me. Home sweet home. In honor of Valentine's Day this week, I'm already breaking my schedule with these videos to bring to you a very special and important rant. But don't worry, everything's going to return to normal come next week. But what is this very special, important rant that you ask? Well, let me tell you. Shipping is having a negative effect on our writing! Now, don't get me wrong. As a fan, shipping can be a lot of fun. I personally find it is one of the highest compliments to a story and a writer that we as fans can give when we become so dedicated to these fictional characters and we become so obsessed with their happiness that we begin writing fan fictions about them. Happy relationships make them happy, which makes you happy, which makes everyone happy. And when you think that two people would be just perfect for each other and for their future happiness, you call them a ship, you slap the name on that ship, and you set it off sailing into the beautiful sunset. And the crazier or sexier the ship, the better the ride. Heck, for example, I ship Shiro and Allura from Voltron. Space parents. Ang and Toph from Avatar the Last Airbender. They could have been the couple of the year. I mean, just look at that, folks. Ichigo and Rukia from Bleach. Despite that awful canon conclusion. The Horn King of Maleficent. You know you want to see this movie, and you'll want to see their children. Dipper and Wendy from Gravity Falls. J just give them a few years, folks. And Kirishima and Ashido. It's just too dang perfect. I love shipping. I've actually been shipping characters since I watched Digimon when I was a kid. But I have noticed a very, very disturbing trend when it comes to shipping and writing. In short, people's incessant shipping has been wrecking how we read and especially write love stories. Seriously, just look at 90% of shipping fan fictions online and clock how fast we jump to the hot and heavy. By all means, crank that scene up to 11 and steam my rice. But come on! Throwing blitz smut at the readers does nothing more than cover up a weekly written story. This Valentine's week, I want to draw your attention to the counter-argument to shipping in your writing, which I like to call sculpting. Ellie Weissel once said, Writing is not like painting where you add. It is not what you put on the canvas that the reader sees. Writing is more like a sculpture, where you remove, you eliminate in order to make the work visible. Even those pages you remove somehow remain. Better yet might even be this quote, this quote from a mysterious source. To carve a horse, I simply carve away anything that doesn't look like a horse. Writing is a process in which you both add and take away to create the best story you can. And the romances you write are very much the same. You see the romantic pair in your mind. You know what they are to become. And so you add and you take away from them within the story to help them become the people and the couple they were destined to be. This means adding more dialogue here, maybe withholding that steamy scene for later, or possibly cutting, out, uh, cutting it out altogether to imply what has happened. The Wheel of Time series plays that last bit up to a wonderful effect. At least for myself, I can say that the implied hot and heavy scenes in the Wheel of Time series did way more for me than all of the sex scenes in A Dance with Dragons combined. But in any case, not to go too far off onto a tangent about which author has written the best sex scenes, I want to stress an important point. The best romances are the ones that grow and develop over time. Whether you are an, archi whether you are an architect writer meticulously planning out every detail, or a garden writer discovering your character and plot as you go, you have to sculpt the characters and their love. Yes, it is an investment of time, but it pays off amazing dividends. If you decide to speed up the process of your characters falling in love, realizing their attraction, and carrying their feelings to full term to something more than just a crush, then all you get is crushed! By jumping over all the important aspects of creating a relationship, you show great disrespect to your characters, which often becomes a poor reflection of yourself. Especially in the many fan fictions we've read as a harem, we've noticed the disrespect many authors have given the characters, both canon and original, by hurling them like beanbags into bed with each other. Shipping encourages laziness in writing when you could have done a really awesome romance instead. All of these well-thought-out character arcs and, 
and developments, they could have been done super, super well. But instead, what you have is you have a bunch of writers typing maniacally away at the keyboard, cackling like witches to the ceiling, getting steamy and sweaty from the scenes that they are writing as they then blast onto the internet and say, Behold, I give you smut! And there was much rejoicing among the creepers of the internet. And there was much rejoicing. Now look here, I get it. I've written a number of couples, both original and for fan fictions. It's so tempting just to skip ahead to the good parts. But whenever I've tried that, it just feels like I'm feasting on expired kelp. I'll be honest though. I really struggled with this problem in one story uh, that I've been writing. There was two characters I was totally shipping together, and even, like, I knew that they were meant to be canon. And um, they just, they really worked so well together, at least in my own mind. And so I just skipped right to the end, and I went to that dark bedroom scene. Wink, wink. Um, but then, as I started writing that, I thought to myself, how the flippin' bacon cheeseburgers... Did these two even get together? I mean, obviously that boy should end up with another girl. And uh, really, why is she even here? This other girl, like, she just, she, they just don't fit together. How did I even believe that they, could, that they could be a couple? The answer was both simple and complicated. The simple part of the answer was that I was beginning at the wrong place. And the complicated answer was the sculpting. You see, I began the couple's journey at the end in that case, what I wanted them to be. I, I shipped them so hard that I was like, ah, let me write that awesome scene there at the end. But it didn't work. And the reason why it really didn't work is because I didn't go through the effort of discovering the two of them together. And really the little things that would bring them together to be a couple. And by missing out on that, I miss how they change as people over time within the story. And I miss out on how they invoke other characters to change. And really what they're getting together even means for the story as a whole. It's amazing, but that these relationships that we write for these fictional characters should actually have a lot of impact on the story altogether. And I was skipping all over that. Rather than giving them a chance to talk about their childhoods, their interests, their pet peeves, and so on. I, I just wanted to get to the end. Rather, I needed to spend time on how they got to know each other, the times that they unexpectedly impressed or saved one another. How did they discover their commonalities and reconcile their differences? I knew who they were supposed to become, and so I had to start the long process at the beginning and begin chipping away from what wasn't needed and by adding the things that I know they needed as a couple. By jumping to the hot and heavy, I would have missed out on all of that. And I can say that it's, gen it's genuinely been a great experience to go through the long and arduous process of sculpting these two. Now then, I feel that since I've brought this on up, I should address another uh, fun issue that I had while putting together the story. Uh, namely that I began shipping the guy with another girl. Remember how I said that I, I asked myself, wait, why isn't he with this other gal entirely? Well, you see, as I began writing this other lady who's a side character, I began to realize, oh my gosh, I shipped these two so hard together. And, and so before I derailed myself, I then actually played it up a little bit more smartly. I asked myself then, okay then, let's, what if I just gave them a quick scene where they do a little bit of flirting? Okay, I do that. And now I ask myself, well, what if they actually did develop feelings for each other? And so I play that out a little bit. And I discovered a really great subplot I could then add into the story that that built everything up even better. And so, and so here's a case in which shipping, when restricted, helped to improve my story. So by all means, you can ship your own characters. Just remember that sculpting takes priority. Play around with things a little here and there. But most importantly, explore the people in your book and who are they and who they are supposed to become. Okay, so enough about my story, because I know that I left a lot of things frustratingly vague, and that's because honestly, if I revealed to you the names and a little bit more about that story, it would give away some intense spoilers for an amazing book that I really hope you all get to read in the future. I sorry, folks, but I don't want to spoil that for you because. I want you to just be like pump your fist in the air when when that glorious moment happens. 
I don't want to take that away from you. So, but to turn away from my own works, let's turn to something that you can actually, uh, even right now, see and enjoy. And so to bring up the matter of shipping as an element within your writing, I can honestly not think of a better example than Star versus the Forces of Evil. Within this show, I mean, let's be serious. We ship Marco Diaz with everyone from Star Butterfly to her Lucidor boyfriend, Tom, to the totally robbed Jackie, to the Dark Horse Kelly, and even a number of you dirty heathens ship him with Ponyhead. For crying out loud, shipping Marco with his fabulous nachos would make a sexier couple. Ugh. Moving on. The point is, we've all known from season one that the show's creators are slowly moving Star and Marco closer together. Even after all of the weirdness and awkwardness of the most recent season, we still see the goal on the horizon. But that doesn't stop the show from teasing out all the other possibilities for Star and Marco. <coughs> Marco and Hakapoo for life. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> this self-started shipping war within the show has allowed the writers and us as the viewers to discover incredible things about each protagonist. Like finding out that while Marco is well-meaning a lot of the time, he can kind of be a little bit selfish as a boyfriend. Star is afraid of confronting the truth and prefers running away. Tom really is a good and considerate teenager despite his appearance and outbursts. Kelly puts on a cool act to cover up her past relationship mistakes. And Jackie is a cinnamon roll too good for this world. And Hecapoo is most likely Stanford Pines' future girlfriend. And Ponyhead is just the worst. What is also fun about this shipping war is that the relationships, both platonic and romantic in nature, help push the overall plot along. Star's troubled feelings for Marco cause her to make some pretty brash decisions that determine a lot of the world's fate, as seen in the episode Bon Bon the Birthday Clown. Also, when Marco travels to Muni uh, to be with Star, he ends up being embroiled with a lot of the conflicts on Star's homeworld. And we get to see the repercussions of that decision unfold in the most recent season, and it's pretty exciting. And it's just so much fun that you can easily excuse all of the shipping. As long as those sweet abs and that fire demon end up together. And I should probably mention Adventure Time, where the different potential ships of Finn the Human with the different princesses of Ooh have also been used to help develop his character and move the plot along. Season 6's episode, Breezy, is shipping and sculpting at their finest, and I highly recommend checking it out. The thing is, we get to see this idea of shipping, which is hastily throwing characters together to form a relationship, play out in this episode, and it has this crazy effect on Finn. He grows as apathetic as Saitama in One Punch Man. But what's really great then is that we get to see him get out of that apathy in other episodes, and we see him confront his feelings for characters like Princess Bubblegum, Flame Princess, and Huntress Wizard. And in the process, we get to see him mature. And each of these women also have their times in the spotlight to help move the plot along and to really just push great character development. Someday we'll do an episode on the podcast or as a rant about the intricacies of Adventure Time's storytelling, because it's just so great. But for now... Not yet. So, to conclude, shipping isn't inherently bad. As fans, we love to ship fictional people. Shipping characters allows writers to discover incredible things about the individuals they bring to life with their words. Shipping isn't bad if we remember to sculpt our stories, carefully adding and taking away what is needed to make the best narrative we can, to make the best characters we can, and to deliver the best romances we can. But if you write lazy smut just because you ship your OTP to death, then may your story meet the same fate as the Indominus Rex! Or we'll just read it for our podcast. So remember to subscribe to our channel to keep in the loop with all of our videos. Also, we encourage you to comment with your favorite OTPs and tell us why you ship them. And give us a link to your favorite pictures of them, because we could always do with some more ships. And remember to check out our podcast, Camille's Harem, through the link in the description provided. You can also check out our Tumblr art and Camille's inspirational pins on Pinterest, and you can join our community discussions about shipping on our Reddit page. And finally, don't forget to send us links to your favorite worst fan fictions via our Twitter at Camille's Harem. That's all for now. Tschüss.